Hello everybody, welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips, and I'll start with a statement you've heard before. I don't think it's new information. Everybody says, eat slowly, chew your food well. I remember being told that when I was a kid. Uh, it improves digestion. It also can reduce the amount of food we consume. And of course, if you've ever practiced this, it does cause you to enjoy the food a little bit more instead of just inhaling it and moving on. According to a recent study, strategies like taking smaller bites, chewing the food more, slower eating, making meals last longer can reduce food intake and help people to feel full with less food than they were eating before. Researchers in Sweden looked at 33 studies that investigated all these things I mentioned, plus uh, the texture of the food, like if it's hard or soft, and the speed of eating to determine the impact of all these practices on feeling full. 12 out of 17 studies showed that people ate less food and felt more full when they ate smaller bites of food and they chewed each bite longer. Another 16 studies showed that increasing the number of chews, particularly with foods that have a more firm texture versus a soft texture, increased the perceived satiety or sense of fullness in most people. The authors concluded that paying attention to how people eat, not just what they eat, could become an important strategy for facilitating weight loss. Now, I am sure that the authors are right, but people eat quickly, we multitask while we eat, there's mindless eating, we don't even bother to chew up our food properly. These are habits practiced by most people, and I have to tell you, true confession here, this is me on many, many days. Um, most of us don't even take time to enjoy the food we eat, we just inhale it and then move on to the next thing or do it while eat while we're doing something else. So. Um, I have been working hard on a lot of things this year, and one of them is to pay more attention to the things that I do, and I'm adding eating to the list. I mean, I started thinking about it. I eat six times a day. That's a lot of time to invest in something that is just flies by and you don't pay attention, you don't notice what you're eating. I mean, I don't eat bad things. I'm not eating cheese, potato chips, and candy bars, but by the same token, I probably could be much more mindful and enjoy my food more. And if you're struggling with weight, it can help a whole lot to learn how to slow down and enjoy food, chew, etc. Now, while we're on the subject of improving diet and weight loss and all that sort of thing, um, those of us who have uh, adopted a plant-based diet have almost experienced um, the phenomenon where our tastes change over time. It's called neuroadaptation, and it's the reason why people like me like sweet potatoes and beets today, whereas 20 years ago, what I liked was cookies and coffee. So how does that happen? Well, over a 120 day period of time, the things that we are exposed to and eat regularly start to become attractive and the things that we're not eating, we don't really care about anymore. Um, and it's encouraging when people start a diet, if they know that the food cravings and that sort of thing will go away, and eventually they'll eat health promoting foods because they want to, not because they're forcing themselves. It gives some hope to the people who are changing their diet. Now, this process not only works for humans, but interestingly enough, it works for fruit flies too. Researchers repeatedly exposed fruit flies to camphor, which they don't like, and over time, their distaste for it was reduced. Now, this is a food additive that's used in commercial desserts like ice cream. Now, while they adapted to this food additive, they did not adapt to uh, toxic substances like quinine or strychnine. Um, they only were able to adapt to something that they must have instinctively known was safe to eat. The researchers noted that the ability to develop taste for foods has been crucial to the survival of all creatures on the planet, from insects to mammals to people, because we've had to respond to changes in the food supply over the thousands and thousands of years that were available. So um, this adaptation ensures survival and it's built into every creature. Now the researchers were able to identify specific changes in certain enzymes that break down protein in these fruit flies and certain synaptic connections. And what was really interesting is after they put the fruit flies back on the diet that they were used to, the changes in the enzymes and connections went away. So this plasticity continues throughout our lifetime. Now for those of us who are changing people or helping people to change their diets and improve their health outcomes, this is really important. Repeated exposure causes increased acceptance. We know this in children, um, but fortunately this continues throughout life. And what it means is that an adult who just makes up his or her mind to adopt a plant-based diet and stick with it for a while will eventually like the new diet as much as he or she likes the current bad diet. So I've always said that doing this is not about willpower. 
It's not how I'm successful at it. I've never known anybody who is successful at it based on willpower. It's about um, understanding certain things about your biology and your preferences and how your brain works and that sort of thing and setting up your environment so that you can be successful. All right, well, that's all for now and for this week. Have a wonderful day and weekend, and I will be back to you next Tuesday with more exciting information about diet and health.